Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Boris FX, and I'm back again with a twofer because in this lesson, we're going to be talking about two new effects inside of Continuum 2020. We're talking about BCC Reflection and BCC Cast Shadow. All right, so as you can see, we are in Media Composer, the most current version of Media Composer, and let's work on Cast Shadow first. Now, the first thing we are going to need to do is to apply the effect to our title. I'm going to hit Command or Control and 8 on the keyboard on both Mac or on Windows. And let's just type in Cast Shadow. Now, you'll notice that with Cast Shadow, it is part of BCC Stylize. I'm going to take the effect, simply drag it and drop it down onto our title. Because we are applying this to a title, I'm just going to press Shift and Y to call up our effect editor. If you don't have effects mode mapped to Shift and Y or mapped to your keyboard, you can always find it right here at the top of the timeline. Now, because I have applied this to a title slash mat, what I need to do is to tell the effect that I have done that. And you'll notice that once I do immediately now, I get a visual representation of exactly what's going on with the default parameter of the cast shadow effect. Now, what I always like to point out with, especially with an effect like this, is that if you're ever sort of stuck with a starting point where to get rolling with it, don't forget, you always have access to the FX browser that you can come through and you can choose one of the presets or you can always make your own, save them, and then access them through the FX browser. Now, I do want to point out something here that gives, I'm not going to say gives me a bit of an advantage when working with an effect like this, but I have extensive After Effects experience, especially when working in 3D space, and I've done a lot of work with lights. So jumping into work with an effect like this for me is kind of like second nature, but the team at Boris Effects, what they've had to do is they've had to take this effect and give it 3D capabilities inside of a 2D environment. Now, I say inside of a 2D environment because we're not dealing with a compositing application here. We're dealing strictly with the Media Composer Effects Editor, which is a 2D interface. It's not like Marquee. So what they've given us the ability to do inside the effect, you'll notice here we have a little crosshairs, and I call it a crosshairs. Basically what it is is it's an on-screen widget that gives us the light right here and gives us the ability to move it in the Y, in the X, and also in the Z. Now you'll notice that when I drag in the Z, the position is actually changing. And if I let go of the mouse, you'll notice that the shadow has now updated itself. However, if I just undo that, you'll see again, if I drag and move it, the actual widget itself doesn't move. And that's because we are dealing with 3D inside of a 2D space that was never really designed for 3D. This is why this effect is really cool that the team at Boris Effects has given us this ability inside of the effects editor to do the work that we need to do. Now, an effect like this, if you're new to it, especially with the concept of now dealing with working in 3D space, can be a little bit daunting. But there's a great tool in here that's going to help us out. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to reset the effect to its default parameters and just say apply to title or mat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate right down here to preview mode. Now, I'm going to turn preview mode on, and we have two options. One is to show the grid only and one is to show the grid and the shadow. Now basically what the grid is representing here is the floor. All right, so this is where the shadow is being cast. Now just for a minute here, I'm just gonna turn this off and we're gonna come back to that in just a second when I actually show you that we have two different types of lights to work with inside of cast shadow. I wanna talk about what's going on with the shadow plane first because you'll notice that right now the shadow is locked to the bottom of the text. It's auto fitting the shadow. If I turn that off, you'll notice that the shadow has disappeared. And what we also have the ability to do here is now to just adjust where that shadow plane is actually falling. Now, once I turn the grid back on, you're gonna notice that by disabling the auto fit shadow, we have the ability to adjust where the floor actually is. And obviously by adjusting the floor, it's gonna have a direct impact on the light that's shining down and casting the shadow from the text in this case onto the floor, all right? Now, let me show you something here as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna auto fit the shadow again and I'm going to, uh, let's switch this back to be off because I wanna show you and I just mentioned this, I kind of teased it, now I have to talk about it, is the fact that we actually have the ability to switch between two different types of lights. Now for me, I always prefer working with the 
parallel light. Now, why do I do that? Well, one thing I like to try to do, especially with an effect like cast shadow, is to cheat volume. And what I mean by that is, is that right now this text looks fairly flat. We have the light casting the shadow from behind. It's being you know projected onto the floor plane and everything looks the way that it should. But for me, what I like to do is I like to create a shadow that looks a little bit like this. Now you might be thinking, well, Kev, it's really the same. It's just that we don't have that perspective of the light basically shining and projecting it out onto the floor. But what we have the ability to do now is something very cool. Watch this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and I'm going to, I'm going to not auto fit the shadow. All right, and what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna turn on preview mode to show the shadow and the grid. All right, now this is especially helpful in a shot like this, where we have a very distinct floor. We can then get in and we can jig the position. I'm just gonna twirl light up here, the position of the shadow plane down just a little bit here, maybe to about there, to really show how our shadow plane now more represents where the actual ground level is. What we can now do is to come in and adjust the softness of the shadow like this, and even adjust its fade length like such. And you'll see that what we now have the ability to do is to give this text almost weight by having it appear as though the shadow is sitting directly underneath it. And then what we have the ability to do at any point is I'm just gonna turn that grid off, is that if I move the shadow a little bit closer to the text, it almost appears as though, without even moving the text, that the text is actually moving its position here. You'll see now it appears more like it's sitting closer to the ground way back here. And now, once I actually adjust the Y point, it almost seems like we're moving the text forward so that it's sitting over the ground here. And in reality, we haven't actually moved the text at all. All we've done is adjusted the position of the shadow. However, the perspective gives it the appearance that it's actually moved. And that almost that it feels like it has a little bit of weight to it as well, which is very cool. And of course we can get in, animate any one of these parameters any way that we would like to do it. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna take what we've learned here, the concepts that we've learned, I wanna move on to talk about BCC reflection. So let me just close the effects editor just for one second here. I'm going to come to my Mexican beach. You'll see that we have this set up and ready to go. And let's get in now and let's talk about reflection. Now, one common phrase that you'll probably hear me talk about throughout my tutorials, specifically when talking about color correction, is that every shot requires color correction, whether you think it does or not. Whether it's a simple color correction or getting in and doing a little bit of a color grade to a shot, like I said, every shot needs to have attention paid to it. And it's no different when we're talking about visual effects. Now you'll see, and you saw actually in the intro, how we'd gotten and added the reflection to our text. Everything looked very cool. However, we actually need to take this composite one step further. Because if you actually take a look just at the background, and let's take a look at the horizon level, you'll see that as I scroll through, the horizon's actually bouncing a little bit. Which, to be honest, when we have our text sitting on the horizon is slightly annoying. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another effect into the mix here. And what I'm gonna do is just punch in opticals for BCC optical stabilizer. You'll see part of the image restoration category inside of Continuum 2020. And all I'm gonna do is simply take the effect and I'm gonna drag it and drop it down onto the bottom most layer. Now, let's make sure that our quality is set to best quality. We're gonna step into effects mode again, my shortcut, shift and Y. And all I'm gonna do is simply hit analyze. Now we're gonna sit here for a real long time, probably about 11 seconds at this point, for it to analyze this shot. And once it's done, you're gonna notice an immediate improvement to the steadiness of the shot. All right, boom, there we go, done. I can now step out of effects mode, come back to the beginning here, hit play. That's looking much better. That horizon almost looks like it is locked in there. So let's now view the title that's on track number two. And what we're gonna do, command or control and eight on the keyboard. We are gonna punch in reflection. I'm gonna take BCC Reflection, again, part of the stylized category. Let's take it, drag it and drop it down onto our title. Now you'll notice that once we apply it to the title, we actually get an immediate view of what's gonna happen with the reflection. And I'm going to step into effects mode and let's make sure that we apply this to the title or the mat. Now I do wanna point out that inside of this effect, we do also have the ability to turn the grid on or off as necessary. 
However, for what I'm going to be doing, I actually don't even need the grid at all to create some great results. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to make sure with the reflection plane that it is auto fit for the reflection. Now, once I do that, you're going to notice the reflection immediately snap up and it looks like there's actually something wrong with it because you'll notice that between all of the glyphs that have flat bottoms, there's actually a space. But if you take a look over here on the right, you'll see that with the C and the O, the curved glyphs that are actually going to sit slightly below the baseline for this text, they actually meet properly. All right, now I can get in and adjust this after the fact, and I'll show you how you can do that in just a second. But basically, all I now need to do to get a very cool looking reflection is I'm going to come down here. We're going to rotate the reflection plane to have it kind of about there. And let's just scroll down a little bit. We're just going to adjust its width. And what I also want to do is make sure the opacity is not set to full, probably about 50%. And let's just make sure that inside of the reflection style, we give it a little bit of softness here. And I think we're pretty much good to go. Now, something that I also want to point out here is that if you take a look, what we also have the ability to do is to add a little bit of ripple to our reflections. If I wanted to get in and add that ripple, what this is going to do is give it the appearance that it is over top of water. So you do have that option if you want it. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to reset our title here. Let's just reset it to its factory default. We'll just apply it to the title mat. And you'll remember that I said that if we came in and we auto fit the reflection to the text, it's going to get in and it's going to snap it right in there to line up with the C and the O. But like I said, maybe we don't want to do that. So what we have the option of doing is not auto fitting the reflection. We can come in and adjust its position. And I can now bring it up and basically line it up however I want with the text here. Now, to be honest, what I could just do is just punch in a value of about minus six, maybe even less than that. Let's go like uh, minus 10. You'll see, there we go. Now this text looks like it's lined up perfectly. And we could then get in and adjust our rotation, et cetera, et cetera, if we needed to. But I wanted to show you one other cool type of title that you can create here again. Let's just reset to the factory defaults. Let's apply to title mat. And I'm going to leave that reflection exactly where it is down here on the beach. And let's now again, much like we'd done before, just rotate it kind of like that. I'm going to want it a little bit lower. And what I'm also going to want to do here is to come in and adjust its width like that, adjust its height a little bit like that. And again, it's just sometimes a little bit of a matter of just playing around just a little bit. And let's set our opacity to be somewhere around 30. Very nice. And again, we're just going to come in and adjust its softness kind of like that. And we've now gotten in and created a completely different type of reflection, literally in what, less than a minute? So you'll see how great this effect is. Along with cast shadow, you'll see the parameters work very similar to each other, but they give you a very different looking end result. And if you want to take things to the next level, you'll notice here that if I come back, I didn't really line up Mexico along the exact horizon as the clip plays through. But if I was to come in and take my Mexico title here and just drop it back in on video track number two, I actually did create a final version that I can simply drag and drop where we have our original reflection sitting on top of the water. And what I did was I just added a few keyframes in here for the image plane so that it actually sits on top of the water. So we can just come back and hit play. And it looks like that text was put there in the original composite. All right, so I hope this lesson has shown you what great effects reflection and cast shadow are and how once you've started to master one of them, you can take the concepts you've learned and immediately apply to the other to create awesome looking effects very quickly and very easily. Now, don't forget, if you subscribe to Continuum, you can download the 2020 update right now. And for more great training, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects YouTube channel. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.